we've had a ton of announcements about, uh, you know, like Windows and AI and co-pilots, and there've been a bunch of hardware announcements too, and I'm really excited to kind of bring this all together to have a conversation about like why Windows is the best place for AI developers, and I'm joined right now by Vicente um, and, um, um, Divya. Divya, I'm so sorry. It's a long day. We so many exciting announcements. So, talk to me first about the the Windows uh, Copilot runtime, Divya. Yeah. Uh, what is it, and what, why are we? Why, why should we be so excited? Absolutely. So, Windows Copilot runtime is essentially everything developers need to get started with, or even start building AI experiences on Windows. What this means is, um, you know. You will see Windows Copilot runtime on the slide. It has about four layers. One is the applications and experiences. This is all the experiences we've built internally at Microsoft. Right. This includes like recall, studio effects, live captions, and so forth. And also includes many third-party experiences that developers build. All of this is powered by the Windows Copilot library, which is the second layer that you see there, Ooh. and the on-device models. So Copilot library and on-device, Copilot library essentially has a set of APIs that are powered by the 40 plus on-device models that ship with Windows. Um, the third layer is all about AI frameworks and tool chains. This is essentially if any developer wants to bring their own model to Windows, this layer enables that. So. When you look at it in a full picture, Windows Copilot runtime sits on top of the powerful client silicon like GPUs and NPUs and enables these great experiences for developers. That's fantastic. And now, Vicente, talk to me a little bit more about the, the Copilot library because there's a lot of great things, but I get excited by the fact that like now there are going to be some local you know, models built into Windows. So tell, tell me more about that. Yeah, so exactly. Like I mean, like Divya was mentioning, so Windows chips with 40 plus models to enable you know, AI capabilities in Windows. And the Copilot library will allow developers to just read, use readily available APIs, and you know they will be able to tap into that power you know, by just including that. And some of the APIs that are going to be available is Studio FX to do uh, image processing. You will have light transcription to do uh, audio processing. You have OCR for image processing, and then you also have PySilica. Um, and many other, and uh, the Recall API uh, that we just announced yesterday, and many others uh, at the end of the year. Okay, um, uh, great. And so, what I what I like about this is that you know I'm I'm a developer. I like to play with local models. Setting that stuff up and m having access to those things is complicated right now. And so it seems like this is going to be a, a great way to access models um, more easily that are already built in. But talk to me about Phi Silica because the Phi um, you know series of models uh, has been shipping for the last year. Yep. But, but what is special about Silica? Yeah, I mean, what's special about Silica? You know, I like all Phi models. You know, it's very targeted train uh, with really good you know security features and all that. Um, but especially for Silica, it is being designed and optimized for the powerful NPU on the Copilot PCs. So you will get like very fast performance on the edge privacy because it's running on your machine, right. and developers can just use it with, by just calling an API. That's awesome. That's and, awesome. And the one thing to add with Fisilica is, as Vicente was saying, right? We've specifically optimized for the Copilot Plus PCs, and it just has the state-of-the-art first token responsiveness and lightning fast inferencing on the local device, and that's most interesting about PhiSilica. Yeah, no, I really like that because, again, like I've been playing around with um, some of the, the, the Phi models and uh, Phi 3 in the last few weeks, and it's really exciting, but to imagine if it's really optimized for this next generation of hardware yeah. so that you can have you know, as low latency as possible and get the best results, that's really exciting. Okay, so um, uh, there's another new feature, Recall. I know you're really excited about Divya. Can you tell me a little bit more about this and like the tech that goes into how it works? Yeah, uh, so Recall essentially helps developers, or I mean, general users, yeah. anybody who's using the Copilot Plus PCs, they can instantly find almost anything that they see on their, or they've done on their Windows PCs. Um, under the hood, Recall is powered by several state-of-the-art multimodal models, and these models have the ability to understand contextual information on the screen and transform this information into vector embeddings. And these vector embeddings are stored in a vector store, and mm -hmm. we call this vector store as Windows Semantic Index. So the Windows Semantic Index is what powers the natural language search ability okay. within Recall. Um, and that's really exciting, so that you don't have to exactly remember the search term. Like, you know, now you have to be like, oh, what did I name that right. file? What did I name what? the file? 
what, 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 you know, where did I put this? What directory yeah. was it in? What was the, the, the web search, you know, that I entered exactly. in? Exactly. And, and you can't find the exact thing. Yo, this is great. So this is like, you can just remember the context and be like, oh, maybe I was looking for that red shirt with white flowers and just put that in, even though if it's not on the description of the web page, that will show up in your search result. That's super, super cool. Okay, so how can developers take advantage of recall? Like, can as a developer, can I plug into the semantic kernel? How does that work? Yeah, so uh, developers can extend their applications with recall using the user activity API. What this means is developers can pass um, contextual information within their applications back to recall. Uh, this way, users can pick up where they left off within their applications and also increase engagement in their apps, essentially, and enable that seamless flow between recall and the Windows apps. OK, but talk to me a little bit more specifically about the semantic index, right? Because um, it, can I access that, or is that going to be something that only Windows has access to? Yeah, we're not enabling access to Windows semantic index okay. because this is the data that's enriched by the Windows users, and we care a lot about privacy and security. But what we're enabling for developers is the ability for them to create their own vector index uh, using their own application data within their apps so that they can also enable natural language search or semantic search. And how this is enabled is through the Vector Embeddings API and the RAG API. We will enable this as part of the Copilot library that Vicente was talking about. Right. This will become in the, you know, we're still working on it, but this is something that we're all excited about. No, and that's great too. And I'm glad you brought that up about, about the you know, commitment to security and privacy because, no, the, the, these are not things that me as a developer should have access to, but it is great that there's an API that says this can be surfaced in my app with my data in the same interface and in the same flow that I've been using with Recall. Absolutely, yeah. That's really, really cool. Okay, so I love all these experiences. We're talking a lot about you know things for like native like Windows uh, apps and, and Windows devs. That's great. I'm a web developer. Do you have anything for me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So for web developers, um, so we actually announced just WebNN, uh, Web Neural Networks, and basically this is using DirectML, which is a low-level machine learning uh, system in Windows that allows developers to just target uh, uh, the device, and they will be able to use the hardware capabilities that are available. And you know, we have been working to make DirectML work across many hardware vendors. So developers only have to focus on their features, their experiences, and it should just show up and work. That's awesome. So that's great. So yeah, I can build my web app because it can run on, you know, we use a bunch of different types of devices. It can work and I can still take advantage of some of these AI features that are built into Windows too. Um, all right. Now, what if I want to bring my own machine learning models into Windows? Because it's great that you are giving us things like Silica and some of the other models on board. But like, you know, I, I like to go on Hugging Face. I like to experiment with other local models. There's a lot of great things that are out yeah. there. Um, is, is that going to be any easier now? Yes. So, I mean, like I mentioned, right? So you have DirectML now. Right. So we're now also supporting uh, PyTorch natively in Windows through the ML. Nice. And what does this mean is that developers can go take any of the thousand models in Hugging Face, download them, and run them in Windows natively through the ML, you know, and it just works. Um, so it just, you know, expands the experience that you, the developers can actually get. No, I'm so excited about that. Uh, when we were talking earlier and when I saw the announcement of PyTorch coming natively, like that really made me happy because, again, the process right now of working with those models, you have to convert it using the Onyx runtime, um, and, it, and it just it adds a friction that yeah. it, it just means, okay, well, you know, it's this much harder to, to play around and experiment. So this is really, really good. Yeah, one thing I love, you know, I'd, I'd add for that is your thousands of hugging face models will just work on Windows now without developers having to go through that conversion process, as you mentioned, reduces the engineering efforts significantly. That's fantastic. I really, really am excited about this. Okay, so. We've got a lot of things going on. Um, do you? Uh, where can people go to learn more? Like, if they're wanting to get started with all this, where, where can they go? Yeah, just go to ak.ms Windows Copilot Runtime. They have access to sample codes, documentation, everything. And we also have the developer blog that Pavan Davaluri uh, released yesterday as part of the announcement. They can also go to ak.ms Windev blog and learn a lot more about these announcements. OK, so ak.ms slash Copilot Runtime and ak.ms uh, Windows Copilot. Runtime. Sorry about that. Um, and as well as check out the blog. Do you guys have any final thoughts? Um, you know, uh, any, any final pitches you want to make about like why everybody should be using Windows to build their AI apps? I definitely think Windows Copilot Runtime should be one place that developers go, regardless of where they are in their AI development journey. Either they're just getting started, or they already have built their own custom models. 
This helps developers take their AI investments to the next level, build, accelerate, and scale with Windows Copilot runtime. I'm so excited. Okay. Thank, thank you thank so you. much. Thank you, Divya. Thank you, Vicente. Thank you. And congrats on, on everything else this week. Thank, thank you. you.